Hello, 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 everybody. We are live today. Welcome back for yet another interview and testimony. Uh, my co-host, Mr. Mark Arica VP, is coming on today. So we're just going to wait on him. I'm so excited to be here today with you guys again. Thank you to everybody who continues to join in and support um, interviewing and testimony on my platform. I truly appreciate it. It's been such a great journey and I'm so excited to continue this journey with everybody. Um, I think Mark is here. Hi, Mark. <clears throat> so I'm going to get our co-host on and we're going to get the Hi, Tanya. Hi, the real uh, Norma Jean. Ah! Hey. Hey, how are you? What's up? I'm good. The camera guy doing? is on camera. What? <laughs> I said the camera guy is on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. It's a rare sight. Take yeah. a screenshot now because you'll never see me in front of the camera. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that you came on um, to just support the, the platform and just the message here. I literally, truly appreciate it. For sure. Thanks for having me on. And thanks for doing what you're doing, really. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, so we're just going to jump right in because we have a lot of good stuff to talk about. And we only got an hour Instagram. Let's hook us up. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to introduce you guys, you to the people. Mark is a producer and a cinematographer based in San Diego and Los Angeles. Mainly San Diego. I go to LA sometimes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Not Guam, not Guam yet. Somebody fly me out there. <laughs> I met you again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're just gonna go over some topics, um, just in regards to you know who you are, um, bullying, um, the work you do, and so on and so forth. Uh, we'll talk about the flyer, the little video clip that was on the flyer guy. Um, that was Mark's work right there. So we'll leave some space to talk a little bit about that. So. Let's just jump in. But before we jump in, let's say hi to everyone. Because Tanya J is over here. My next video in Guam. Hmm. 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 As long as we're flying, because I can't swim. And we're not swimming over there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget me, guys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, for everybody that's in the live right now and everybody that's going to continue to join, please utilize the question box on the, down below. If you guys have any questions for Mark or myself, um, that'll be super awesome. So that way we can clear for everyone to see. Um, and yeah, so the topic of today is let's talk about bullying. And I thank you for coming on and speaking out and participating in my questionnaire about experience, um, you know, everybody's personal experience with bullying. Um, and again, I just want to hold space to saying thank you so much for joining in. So do you want to talk a little bit about the question that you answered and just your response? Yeah, I think the question was, I'm sorry, can you remind me what the question was? Of well, course. What the, your your um, question. Yeah, the question was, um, the topic was bullying, and the question was, um, if there was one thing, or can you share uh, your experience um, in regards to bullying, I believe, right? Yeah, I, I so for sure remember my response, and it was that I've been on both sides, unfortunately. And like, like how we kind of discussed yesterday, it was almost no hesitation in my response, because it's something that I've discussed before to a select few. <laughs> uh, one being Faye. What's up, Faye? Um, she and I go way back. And it's if, if I hadn't talked to her or anybody about um, my experience, I probably wouldn't have been as comfortable to talk about it, or at least as open. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I, I again just want to hold space to say thank you very much uh, for starting a conversation as far as coming out and saying that you did experience getting bullied and you did, you 
you did in one point of your life um, bully as well. I think that that's not something that we talk about a lot. And like I was telling you yesterday, I feel like all of us have been a bully in one way or another. I was just talking to my cousin the other day and I was like, you know, I did these things. And now that I'm looking at it with the definition of bullying, that was bullying towards you. So I'm sorry, right? Um, so I thought that it was very big of you and I'm so happy that you decided to come on live because you're showing <laughs> people that they can do it too. Yeah. Not as far as coming on live, but just as far as starting the conversation, um, as yeah. far as being honest and truthful and admitting. So thank you so much. Um, I truly appreciate that. Um, and yesterday we were talking a little bit about just social influences and how that kind of impacted you to kind of like feel like you needed to do certain things. Um, so can you kind of just like touch on that as far as like um, maybe as much as you're comfortable, your experience with being bullied and then your experience of also bullying and how did social pressures maybe impact or influence that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I didn't grow up in the greatest part of San Diego. Um, and that part being around certain influences, certain groups of people where you have to feel like you have to fit in. It's like, it's, especially at that young of, uh, that young of an age, you, you got to find your family outside of your actual blood family because it, get pretty, it can get pretty lonely. And often I, it got pretty lonely and I gravitated towards this particular group that, found satisfaction in trying to feel dominant on top of other people. And it's like in, in, in order to gain the respect almost, I had to do very similar things. And, and you know, in high, like I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I just wanted to be part of something or somebody or a group of people, a sense of family almost. So. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, uh, again, I'm always going to continue to say thank you. So don't get annoyed. <laughs> People can comment and Mark as well. Um, but I just want to exaggerate, um, um, you know, grace towards you for saying those kind of things, because this is still happening today. The social pressures are still happening today in school, in communities, in homes, where kids feel they have to be a certain way, act a certain way, do certain things to satisfy, you know, family, to satisfy friends, to satisfy, you know, teachers and things like that, because we are always taught to just do, do, do what is being told of us or what is kind of like trending, I guess. Um, but we never take the time to really let the kids express them themselves and communicate themselves and the number one thing that kind of like really bugs me and gets under my skin is when adults say like I know better because I'm older like yes you know better you know because you're older you've been through life you're older but it's like that doesn't necessarily mean like you know better you know yeah yeah, so um, again, I appreciate you talking about that. I think that that happens everywhere, and you're going to be, you're such a great example, Mark, <laughs> for everyone. I really love that you're coming up. I, I, I give credit to the people I've come across, and uh, yeah, they, they're just the positive influences, you know, and just pursuing, you know, I'm still trying to follow that road, you know, so. I'm always blessed with the people that I surround myself, especially in film. Film is, we could talk about that later, but and how things in the past have transitioned. And, you know, I, I still apply to this day in, in film. So, yes, yes, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll credit to them, really. Yes, and I want to piggyback on that topic as far as, like, the people that you have come across. I want to thank those people, whoever they may be, and I want to just um, broaden that message um, uh, to everybody who is watching and to everyone who is going to come across this, um, is that have your support system, have your group that you can trust, and if you're not, if you didn't find them yet, if you haven't found them yet, they will come. 
you will find them. You just have to be patient. You have to go through it. I know it sucks and it feels very, very lonely, but there will be people that will want to help you. I pray like literally, I, I don't pray every night. I'm not perfect at it. But when I do pray, a part of my prayers is I ask God to send me people who are going to want to mold me, teach me, be there for me when I'm at my lowest point. Because people want to like book it when you're like on the bottom, right? Everybody's always trying to be with you when you're at the top. Nobody wants to be with you when you're at the bottom. And I can admit doing that as well myself. Um, I just wanted to send out the message and double back on, on, on uh, Mark's message um, that, you know, there will be people that will be there, um, you know, to support their, to support you and be there for you. And I just thank God and I thank all the people out there who are willing and able to stand by people who may be struggling or sharing anything. Amen to that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. On camera. What? <laughs> um, I, I love the energy. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. Before we move on to the next topics, um, because there was a topic that I want to cover that I really, really enjoyed hearing from you. But before we do that, we'll just kind of jump into the comments and the question box that we have here. So did you, did you, Tanya J with the questions. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. So Tanya is asking, when did you realize you were the bully? What encouraged you to change? Very great question, Tanya J. Uh, when I felt like I had to prove myself and, and doing something that I didn't 100% feel comfortable doing. And I knew like if I didn't do it, they would look at me a certain way. And then if I lost those groups of friends, then I would have been, you know, I would have been, I don't know who to hang out with at the time. So that's, I think for anybody, like if, if you're not hundred percent comfortable doing something, then it's just, I don't know, but you still do it, then you're just trying to prove something, not for yourself. So I just remember, I mean, I'm obviously thinking that deep now because I'm able to, but at the time it's like, you know, th there's that sense of uncomfortability that you can't really determine what it is at that young of an age. You just know you feel uncomfortable. And I know I felt that way. And the yeah. sad part was when I did it, I felt empowered. You know, I felt powerful, I guess, because it's like, you know, this person's not going to, can't do anything. This person's weak. And I've, I fueled off of that. So, and I guess the more and more you do it, it's like, okay, it doesn't feel as bad. And I think that's why people that engage in certain activities and they get that high, I, that, that might be an, a reason why they just keep doing it. It's just adding fuel. They just get that, that adrenaline. Yeah. And the second part of the question, what encouraged me to change? I think it was my transition from middle school to high school. It was when those groups of people that I associated with in middle school didn't follow me to high school. So I felt alone again. <laughs> and then also, I took, I took summer classes because I didn't have the best grades. And so before going to high school, I took summer classes. I would walk home every day. And it's you know, like 30 minutes, almost an hour, just walking home. So it's 30 minutes to an hour, just time to yourself to just think. And I remember at, during that time, I was looking back, it was symptoms of probably depression. I've, I was very emotional. In, in, in what people could call, oh, you're emo, <laughs> you know? Um, but it, it, it was during that time too that I started, I'm trying to remember it because that's when I got very into reading the Bible. I'm trying to remember if I was taking 
attending church school at the time as well, like after regular school hours. Um, I just remember reading the Bible a lot. And to the point where I considered myself an atheist because I was really just trying to grasp the concept of universal love, I guess. And I eventually, I, I remember, I'll never forget when I went to uh, my pastor and then I, I talked to him about it and I was crying because I, I told him that I really wanted to believe, but I couldn't because it just didn't make sense to me. And I think, I, I think he just told me to just keep trying, just just keep your heart open. And then come Sunday, you know, I see him walking down the aisle and then I got emotional. I was with my family. I, I'm a very private person. So they didn't know exactly what was going on within me. Um, but um, eventually I, I, began to realize that, that there is such thing as love and universal love. And I am to the point now where like nothing could take that away from me. Like I, I try my best to really live it and really share it. And yeah, I, I like to, I like to say I, I still try to apply it every day <laughs> to this day. <laughs> Yes, yes. Wow, that was a very like detailed answer. I love your answer. Um, again, before we move on, I just want to hold space to appreciate you. I just wanted to I want to let you know that you are a part of the growth of mental health, mental awareness, self confidence and self love. And I say that because again, we struggle to admit you said it yourself you're a very private person so nobody really knew which that's okay if you choose to be like that um if you choose to you know um do it that way that's okay that's your choosing um but you you know growing and learning to come out and to speak up and to share yourself your personal self with others and especially because it's a, such an emotional thing as well um, it's just amazing. It's beautiful. I want to tell you, I'm an emotional person. My mom can attest and tell you that I'm always crying for like literally everything, but being emotional, is not a bad thing. It's not like, um, it's not a weak thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a conscious thing. And it's a connection thing because it's like emotional intelligence is universal. It's just explosive more than your, um, how do you say it? Um, in school, your IQ, I guess. Um, so yeah, just beautiful. I just have like no <laughs> words, Mark. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> um, yes, great question, Tanya J. Great response, Mark. I truly appreciate it. The real Norma J. asked a question. Did you ever want to fight back, but you were afraid? Great question. Yeah, I did. Um, but I knew, if, like, if I did something, I probably would have gotten my ass beat. <laughs> just, just due to like size and just what the people that they knew. Because again, we're we're talking about like being associated with certain groups, and I knew the group that I was with wasn't in comparison. You know, it, it's I, it's like it's better to just take the hits and it's just better to just brush it off because who knows, like they're going to get their people and it's just going to make things worse, I guess. So th th that was the, the hard part was just every day, just, just um, taking it. So you, 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 I felt hopeless and for sure. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, I I got into I I did get into a fight. I'm just trying to remember what what, what it was about. But it wasn't about like retaliating. I think it was just wanting to fight. 
because at the end we just like shook hands or whatever it was weird because prior to getting in that fight it was like it's about to go down <laughs> and it's can't turn back now again when i say can't turn back now is because all these people were following me they're just wanting to see a fight happen and it's again it's just feeling that adrenaline so i think that was the only time that i actually physically responded um other than that a lot of it was like when i felt hopeless a lot of it was just internal so i started bottling things up because it, it's and it's and that that whole part i still struggle to this day is when i bottle things up and and i wonder if it's because of what i experienced back then and being afraid of what would happen if i acted on something right then and there so uh, a lot of the close friends that I, i i work with now and i associate myself now they know that that is something that i'm personally working on is bottling things up so i think them for always trying to um shed a light on that cuz i i rely on them for for me to be the better person so yeah yes yes <clears throat> so poetic i'm just like listening to you and i'm like i don't know that <laughs> somebody give me the questions please <laughs> like um Yeah no um I truly appreciate it. I'm sorry my energy is like super high. I think that these are serious topics so I am like you know um being compassionate with you um but at the same time I'm just so like up and happy that you're just you know sharing yourself with us. Um because as I told you yesterday and as I always tell everybody on live it's like there are other people out, out, out there who are bottling it up and it it, it is straining them. from standing up or speaking out. So um I know that it's not an easy thing um Mark and I know that sometimes I can I can't do that either. Um I jump on these lives and things but I want everybody to know that there are some stuff that I'm bottling up too. I just released a very personal um dear close to my heart project last Friday I believe. Um it was it was video it was picture clips but there was also audio in it and I just kind of like poured myself out and I've kind of been like holding that in for like the past 29 years um and and I still don't you know sometimes believe in myself I still don't sometimes trust myself um I always depend heavily heavily um on on my circle to be there for me I I I always depend heavily on my mother my mom was actually the one that asked that last question Norma J <laughs> um but I always go to her for everything our relationship is amazing and we have grown into a space where I can just be super like communicative with her and and just be open and honest um but um my mom said if you called i would have kicked their ass for you but i'll be nice <laughs> <laughs> she is the one she is the boss lady but um yeah no um i i just want to say you know again like thank you of course and and it's not easy it's not an easy thing i can like do this live today and then tomorrow i can go to a cert- through a certain situation that strains me like i was talking about and i won't be able to do it i i again i'm very emotional i am very in tune with my emotions i connect so like universally with with people with things with situations and i just have to be very mindful of what i give myself to because a lot of these emotions and feelings are very strong right and if i'm not conscious and taking care of myself it can overwhelm me so you're doing great you're doing awesome um i encourage you to keep continuing to rock with your crew rock with your group and um it all happens in time <laughs> it's yeah. all on our time it's not on anybody's time it's not on you know like oh before a certain age or before a certain time or before no certain... nope, it's all on our time so that's beautiful thank you for sharing that 
for sure. We are going to see some more questions before we jump in. Um, so we'll save these questions because they're specific to just like your work and the stuff that you're doing um, towards like the ending just so we can kind of be on pace. But um, thank you for the social influence part. I appreciate it. I think that is happening so much. Um, yesterday you were talking about how the things that you went through and I'm glad that you were talking about um you know reading the bible and stuff because that was also my other question um but you talked about like all the situations and the and the things that you went through as a child kind of shaped your journey to like certain um professions and certain goals um that you wanted to do and also shaped everything coming yeah. out you're laughing because I'm still mad at you <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> It's a lot. Um, yeah, but just like um, pertaining to just specifically as far as like that situation and then and then just your journey with there to where you are now, what what was that all like? Man, it's it's funny. It's like, I don't even know where to begin because I already told you. It's like, it's, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, this is great. It's good. It's important. I, I, I think it's best to start with when I was in high school, I played football. And there, there's something about being in football and being around a team that felt nice. Maybe it was something that I missed going from middle school to high school and being a part of a group, whether good or bad. Um, obviously, the football is the positive side of things. And then for my high school end-of-the-year project, my senior thesis, uh, I went back to my middle school to teach the kids. Uh, so I became a coach to those little kids. <laughs> and I, I believe I did it. Uh, I did it because, so in, in the thesis, we were supposed to pick like our career paths. And I, I'm pretty sure I either put a physical ed teacher or a school counselor, one of the two, or social and and or social worker as well. I want to work with people regardless. <laughs> um, I, remember, I, I remember in middle school, I had to, uh, coaching in middle school, I had to stand in front of the class with the, the kids, the players, and I got so anxious. I'm like, Dang, they're waiting for me to like do a magic trick or like do something interesting. <laughs> and it was like that that's when I got the the stage fright almost. But luckily I had uh an, an assistant coach to to be there to help me out. Uh, and then going into college, I went into Southwestern College in uh Chula Vista down here in San Diego. Uh I, I majored in psychology that I remember, I don't, I don't remember if it was like 101 or the class after that, which might've been like psych 102. But I remember the professor beginning the class with, um, you know, if you're a psych major, raise your hand, I raise my hand. And then, and then he was like, if you're, go if you're gonna be a psych major, just prepare to be in school for the rest of your life. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure once I heard that, <laughs> I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> I ain't trying to be in school all the rest of my life. Uh, I, I I probably went to like two or three other classes after that until I just totally just stopped going. Uh, and then I got into, I started considering like the whole medical field thing, uh, like physical therapy. And then my way of getting to physical therapy was through massage therapy. So I became a certified massage therapist, uh, therapist uh, first until I got uh, released from my job. <laughs> I, I just realized it wasn't for me. Just something about having that temperature at, at the likeness of the client. And, so, and I hate heat. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they would want it really hot. I'm like, gotta be with this person for an hour. 
<laughs> it's not even, it wasn't even like, I have to be with this person for an hour. I got to be in this heat for one hour. That's why I hate the heat wave right now in San Diego. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, away from the whole school thing, I, I took up photography for fun as a hobby. And um, also, also I, I, in elementary, I actually went to an art-centered school. Uh, middle school was just a regular public school. High school was just a regular public school. Um, so I, I feel like I've always been creative. Uh, like I, I drew when I was younger. Uh, I was like one of the go-to drawers back in elementary school. Um, so I think photography was just another way for me to get back into that whole creative side. And then photography eventually just led into video. I remember one of my classmates at Southwestern College, he was a rapper and he asked me to do a music video. And I, I, I tried reminding him like, I'm just a photographer, man. I don't do video. <laughs> uh, we did the video and it was bad. <laughs> so, um, so from that point on, I, 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 just, I just ran with it. I liked the collaborative part of filmmaking and it's it's like going back to like being in that team environment, going back to high school football, and high school football mixed with the elementary art school upbringing. It's like those two worlds um, brought together, and filmmaking is definitely something that I I don't see myself doing anything other than filmmaking, and just being around creative individuals. <laughs> And yeah, that's 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 where I'm at now. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, and 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 the stereotypical military thing in the Filipino household. I remember I, I went as far as to like getting what's called the ASVAB test, the, your whole fitness thing. I that's how far I got, and then I didn't do it, obviously. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I wanted us to touch on that, Mark, just because when you shared that whole process with me yesterday, I just saw just by listening to you how those things that you went through pretty much kind of like shaped where you are right now. And it brought you out just to the creativity, the arts, as far as uh, photography and video. Um, and the reason why I wanted to touch on that is because there's a lot of young people out there who struggle with this thing. They struggle with knowing, like, once we hit 18, all of a sudden there's a magic genie waving his wand around saying that we have to have life figured out when there's, like, 30, 40, 50-year-olds that don't even have their life figured out. But yet we still have that pressure on, like, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, which is great. It's great um, as a positive pressure to push and motivate. But at the same time, we're using it as a negative pressure, and it forces the kids to believe that they have to, like, check this box of, like, a good friend of ours um, was – sharing with me the other day of like being a doctor, being an engineer, like you're saying, going into the military. And it's just those, t those things, which are beautiful occupations. They're very important work to be done, but I don't really think that, you know, we should put the young people in any kind of box. I feel like the twenties, like once you're 18, like you're still in a young person mindset. You're still in like, you know, like a teenager, 17, 18 mindset. So I think like those early twenties should be like a flex part um, to really explore, not only professionally, but personally, because you're entering a new age, a new like decade. And, and there's just like this definition of what it should look like. So that was the reason why I wanted you to share that. Even though you said it was long, I thought it was very beautiful. <laughs> <It's still long. laughs> very beautiful, very necessary. Because again, there are people out there who struggle, not even young people, just people in general who just struggle with having to feel the need to like get things done so i want i wanted you to share that part of your story to show people that 
for one. There's going to be different things that we're going to dabble in. There's going to be different occupations and jobs that we're going to want to do. There's going to be jobs that we enjoy doing. There's going to be jobs that we think we have to do to survive. Um, so it's just all a part of the process and it's all on us. Um, so continue, yeah. like Mark's story shared, if everybody else caught it, continue to do what you're doing, continue to explore, and at the end of it, find your passion and find what really makes you happy. Um, because I shared this with one of the interviews I had before, I shared it, I believe, with one of my family members, and I'll share with you guys again, was that I had a dream like a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, and it was so random, right? Because I was like, was I watching a video or a movie, or where did this idea come from? But I was watching Immigration Nation on Netflix, so I know that I wasn't watching, it wasn't on video. I had a dream that I was in like an old, pers um, uh, old person's home, and that this lady was kind of like guiding me around as if I was in the home, like she was showing me a tour. And then in the, vi in, in the dream, she was like showing me all the people. And she was like, well, Chelsea, at the end of the day, you're going to get older. And you're going to end up here or somewhere else doing the same thing as these people. And it showed like, it, she was saying, you're gonna be like that man over there sitting down, reading a book or dancing, vice versa. You're gonna be over here with this group, you know, singing or playing board games and stuff. Um, so do what you, what makes you happy. And it was so crazy because when I woke up, you know how like you wake up and then like you're in that, I think I shared it with Ray John. Cause he was like, I can control my dreams. And I'm like, teach me how. <laughs> um, but I shared it with Ray, and um, when I woke up, like, you know how, like, you're all, like, dizzy, and you're like, that happened? Like, what just, like, you know what I mean? Like, what just happened? Um, but I took it as a message, because I've really been praying to God. I've been praying. Um, again, I'm not perfect in the prayers, but when I do, I really ask him to reveal what he want, what he's put me here to do. And like I was telling my mentor the other day, use Coach Tay, shout out. She told me in the beginning of our session when we met, she was like, you need to find something that you don't even think of doing. Like you could just put your hands to it and you're doing it. You need to find something where it's like you're not even sweating it. You're just going, 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 going. And yesterday, Faye was actually asking me like, well, how do you do, you know, like the editing and like all of this stuff and everything. And I'm like, I don't have boundaries right now, Faye, <laughs> which is literally true. I am like not drawing boundaries, guys. So please learn from me. I am trying my best. I don't throw the boundaries out the door. I try my best to give me a specific bedtime. I try my best to get off the phones and the electronics and stuff like that. Um, but what really pushes me to do it is just everybody's willingness to come on and share. Um, everybody's like just openness to like spread this love with me. And I just feel like that's just my purpose right there is just connecting with people and, and um, you know, just spreading the message. So take your yeah. time people <laughs> i want to add i want to add to like when i got into filmmaking i first gravitated towards directing and i feel like everything that i've gone through like even being a psych major like that it, filmmaking is crazy it's 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 a it's a meshing part of other professions like for me when i was directing film I, I liked i liked it because I was, I, I, I felt like I was sensitive to body language and just like the human psyche and the, you know, like the subtleties and just human emotions. And then that's one of the main things you would have to do as like a film director. So that's why I liked it. I was able to not fully let go of like, man, like, man, I can't be, I can't work directly with people as a school counselor or as a social worker or whatever. I could kind of do that as a director and making sure that these certain emotions get conveyed through film and through the creative arts. And so that, that's another reason why I got into like directing. But what I focus now is more on like the camera and lighting side of thing. Um, also known as like a cinematographer. I like it. So the main role is just basically just to get the director's vision across through camera and lighting and just emotion. 
I I like cinematography because it's going back into being that supportive role and making sure that the director, m making sure I'm able to tell the director's vision the best it, the best it can. So it's it's like my way of giving back and just making sure the people that that I'm in around with that I can empower them through in, in, in this case the creative arts. So I, I think I just naturally gravitate towards that supportive role because I I I feel better when people are happier around me. And I can do that as the cinematographer and any other profession really. Like you, you could just because you can't be a school counselor and you ended up being like an engineer or whatever, you could you could still be that person. You could still be that supportive role. And who knows if if you take those attributes and apply it to engineering, you know, people will, will notice. I mean, I'm not an engineer. I don't know what goes into it. But I, I could just imagine as long as you have that right state of mind and just wanting to pursue the bigger goal, which is like, I don't know, like building a big structure or whatever, and people see that, who knows, maybe you get bumped up to a position because they, they see you as more than just collecting the money or whatever. You're not there for, like, you know, obviously people take jobs for financial reasons, but I think if, if, if your purpose is beyond financial and just willing to put in the necessary work to get something done. And I think it could take, it could bring you to places you never thought uh, you'd see yourself in. So I just want to fit that in there. <laughs> yes, yes, no. And I, I, I wanted, I want to piggyback that um, and tell you, which you already said it yourself, that you're actually doing that kind of work regardless if you're not like in a school in an office being a school counselor or regardless if you're not in the school in the gyms you know coaching or anything or um whatever it is the journey that you wanted to do you're still doing that by the work you're doing not by the work not by the work that you're doing but through you as a person because even if you didn't go finish school for psych or anything it is in you right like your interest to go to school and study a certain subject it's because of your interest in it in your passion thank you Faye. passion so so everything that you're doing with your works and your stuff that you're doing right now you are still connecting with people because when i think of music or videos it's like i want to feel a connection right like I see these images and I see these, this, I listen to the audio and stuff and I'm searching for what I can connect with, what I can relate with. And you doing what you're doing, translate that. It communicates that with the craft and the expertise and the gifts that you have from you, from Mark, not from your gifts of like uh, videos and uh, photography or anything. It's from you. So I just wanted to share that. I know I'm like teasing you, like I'm mad at you, school counseling, but you're exactly right. <laughs> you're doing it. You're doing it regardless of it's school counseling, whatever the case is, you're doing it with the work you're doing it right now um, in, in the work and your videos and things like that. So. Such great stuff, <laughs> Mark. Um, <laughs> So yeah, moving on from that, again, thank you very much. Um, we'll jump in uh, to the lighter side of things, guys. We'll jump into the happy stuff. Um, so if you just want to explain and tell everybody, which we've been kind of doing um, throughout uh, the live already, but if you miss anything, anything else you do specifically, um, let's talk about the video that we shared on the flyer and all that good stuff. Uh, talk about the, the the video that you posted. Yes, that, your work. that was my one minute video reel. <laughs> off. There we go. Uh -oh. There. 
We're here. Yay. You need, you need me to go over there to work on your camera on that? <laughs> yes, I very much do. And I think I've had no time, Mark. People are coming on. <laughs> All right, Faye, let's go. We need a, we need a set deck or bed you. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that, that video was just some highlight of the work I've done on the lighting and the camera and yeah, that's, that's, that's what that video is for. Then at the end, you see a little bit of a <coughs> Tony J <Jay> video. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It has been doing great. It's been doing awesome. I think we, I think she posted that it hit over what, like two, 2,000, 200 something thousand, something in the thousands. Three. What is Three? it, Tanya J? Almost, almost for a thousand. What is it, Tanya J? Um, and so yeah, to double back on the work and things like that too. Speaking of leave the house, Tanya J wants to know what was your favorite part about leave the house production, and your favorite things to shoot. Favorite part. Oh man, uh, it, it might sound cliche, but everything about it, it's it's different nowadays because the whole COVID thing. So everything has to be planned out inside and out, and because you don't want to you want you don't want to waste or spend extra energy that you shouldn't have to. You just want to get out of there, make sure everyone gets home safe. <laughs> uh, so my favorite part was trying to figure out and working with uh, director Edwin Franco and just coming up with the best way to execute the scenes that we had to do for the two days that we shot it. Uh, and also just the collaborative nature of everything. Like for, for me, the camera and lighting person, um, you have Edwin, the director, and then there's also Sophia uh, with the assistance of Faye to help with um, the production design. So it's 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 a co super collaborative in, to make sure everything looks right, lighting looks right, uh, the set looks right. So it's it, it's that, that, that's what I loved about it. It's really just problem solving and just it was like, how do we make this as dope as we can get it? You know, like the the song is dope, the people involved in is dope, Tanya is dope. So. That's that. That's what I loved about it. And yeah, my favorite thing to shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Uh, all of them, but if I had to pick one, it'd probably be the bathroom scene. Because, I just love no. Well, that was great too. My favorite thing to shoot was what I call Emma's beauty shot. It was the point of view of the vanity mirror and we were so tight on schedule that it was it almost had to be tossed out to just fit in the other scenes but i fought to make sure that we get it because the way my team and i did it uh which was matt knowles alex bennett ruben martinez and omar david like the way we executed that shot like was so creative um, because it's supposed to be a mirror, and obviously you can't shoot towards a mirror. You see the camera. So that's that's the magic that I got to do that I couldn't do to those middle school kids. <laughs> uh, it's 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 that movie magic. That 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 was uh, definitely one of my favorite things to shoot. As simple as it looks visually, the way to do it is like you. You know, it, it takes some creative minds to do. You know, you can't, it's, so we didn't shoot it towards a mirror. We didn't reflect anything. We didn't use extra mirrors and yeah, it was, yeah. It was, the camera was straight at Emma and Tanya J. So that's my favorite thing, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, there was somebody else who commented in question for those of you who are just tuning in utilize the question box please for your questions that way everything is all collected up in here um 
and I'm not searching, but I thought it was a great question. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, Edwin Franco. Speaking of Edwin Franco, what's your passion, Mark? My pet. <laughs> Dang it, Edwin. Dang it, Edwin. Uh, we, 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 there's an inside joke there, so he, know, he knows why I'm cracking up. <laughs> uh, I mean, my passion is, is just working with people and just and expressing through the visual arts and yeah I, that's my that's my passion edwin <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll thank everybody for the questions keep the questions rolling in we're going to try and squeeze them in for the last seven minutes that we have but before we go um as you guys have seen and and heard um uh, or whatnot. Um, usually when I do these lives, my main focus point is to take our life experiences and turn it into adolescent adv life advice. So Mr. Mark, um, for you, this question, uh, if you could tell your teenage self one thing, what would that be? To, to don't be don't be ashamed to ask for help uh, yeah it, it, get, it could get pretty lonely and just to to remind myself that you know everyone's fighting their own battles and I think we you know we, we get pin, we pin ourselves in a corner and it's it's like you know no one's gonna understand no one's going to you know, no one's there to help. But uh, I, going back to like talking to Faye, like Faye, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spill a little bit of something, Faye. Uh, but before I jumped on, but before I even agreed, well, actually, it was just after I agreed to get on this live. I, I, I had to talk to Faye because I've showed, I've told her a little bit about my past and we were just sharing stories and then when she shared me some of her stories like that that alone was enough to just make me feel better years later like the it's everyone's <laughs> going through their own thing and i that that's definitely one of the things i would tell myself is just to to don't be afraid to don't, don't be ashamed to ask for help because there, there's there will be people to be willing to help you. And if they're not, go to, to the next person. So don't be afraid. <laughs> Can I get makeup, please? <laughs> no, uh, just Mich Michelle, makeup, Michelle. Michelle, Sonia, <laughs> please, commercial. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like to like I like to make light of the things that even if it's in the darkness. Um, I also like to say that I'm not taking away from the seriousness of it, but I like to take light into it because a lot of times, you know, we make it these serious topics, which it is serious and it's important, but it doesn't need to be serious in the sense where we can't show our emotion, right? Um, so thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it always Faye in the comments just showing all the love we family yes Faye. Faye is so <laughs> awesome i was sharing with you yesterday that she's just amazing as well um we're in messages i hopefully i can work something here with Faye as well um but yeah and to double back on that question before we um before we end it here if you knew back then like as your younger self what you know now would you want to change anything uh, that, that's tough because i obviously wouldn't be here without if i if i hadn't gone through what i did so i'll say nothing change nothing <laughs> uh but I, i'm sure that the different if, if things were done differently back then who knows i probably would have ended up dead unfortunately that was kind of the reality uh, what I was going through, I could have maybe not make it to the age I'm at now. Because I've had friends that didn't go past 
16 and one 20. Yeah, definitely. Um, I appreciate your response. Thank you so much. Uh, Mark, I love you. <laughs> You're so beautiful. You're amazing. Um, I appreciate your, your response. Um, I want everyone to, to know that this is a very, very safe space. Um, we're all fam. We're all family. Um, we're always going to be family. And I just think everybody is so beautiful and amazing for coming on and really just sharing and opening up. Um, I want to say thank you to you again, Mark. I want to tell you again that you are a part of the growth and development of mental health, mental awareness, self-love. Um, you're such a strong person. See, Faye in the comments, like right behind, like <laughs> right there, right. <laughs> like you're such a strong dude. Um, you're such a strong dude. You're super awesome. And to double back in all serious, yes, all seriousness, yes. Um, there are others, you know, um, that we have lost along the way at a very young age. Um, I lost people at a very young age too. I've experienced people, um, you know, I used to work at a homeless shelter and it really strained me. It really struggled me. It put me in a bind. It put me down, dude, to the point where I didn't even want to get out of bed because I experienced the kid that I was working with, um, pass away and he was only 12 years old. Um, that really put me down, dude. That really, really put me down. And uh, what pulled me out of that was these videos and these lives with Ray John and Tanya and everybody. And see, nobody even knows that. Um, so thank you for sharing that you wouldn't change anything. The reason why I asked that, Mark, is I want to set that message and culture out to the young people and people in general. This information is for everybody, as universal as it can be is that we're going to go through things and we're going to wish in that moment that we can be somewhere else. We're going to wish in that moment that we don't, that we shouldn't be going through this. Right. But I want everyone to understand that the things that we go through, regardless if it's hard and tough and nitty gritty, it really takes us to where we need to be. You're beautiful. I don't even know what to say right now, Mark. Can I please get my script? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so before I go, thank you so much. I don't know if it's going to cut off, so I'm starting to talk um, super fast. But thank you for coming on to interviewing and testimony. I appreciate you. I'm going to tag you on this live. For anybody else who is interested, please DM me. Let me know if you guys want to come in, jump on live. Anything else, Mark, you want to say to the people? I, I just want to thank you for providing and giving people a voice when they feel silent. So, so I thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're so awesome. You're so amazing. I'm going to follow up with you, um, message in with you, um, just to check in and say hello. Thank you for everybody in the comments. Faye, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Tanya, J, Edwin, Franco, thank you, everybody. Please, guys, if you're interested in jumping in, please, please, please jump in. Edwin, yes. Tanya, yes. Thank you so much. Um, for everybody who's interested, you guys are in San Diego, Los Angeles, you are watching this or you will watch this in the future, please hit up Mark for any of that cool uh, <laughs> um, vibey connections with the cinematography. Hit, hit, up, hit up the team. It takes a team. Hit up the team. Any one of us. Yes. Everybody is in here. All the comments are going off, Mark. Look at that. You're amazing. I love this talk. Edwin sending you kisses. Like, look at all of this. Edwin's always kissing me. It's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have, um, I actually have Ir uh, Irma 101 coming on in an hour. So if you guys are available and if you guys are able to jump in, I think that it's going to be such a, uh, a good informative talk. And um, uh, yeah, do, do, do. Tanya Day, this is why <laughs> this is why I want to be on this team. 
Oh, Mark. My mommy said, thank you, Mark. You're such a beautiful spirit, just like my baby. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Mom, don't call me baby in front of people. Just kidding. <laughs> Whatever you want, girl. <laughs> Uh, Tanya and Faye, everybody, I was telling Mark, like, whenever this COVID and we get to leave the house, we need to leave the house hey. and wake up, put our, put our, put our artistic hands and blessings together. 